What are you doing? Mm -hmm. So today might be interesting. Normally I have Becky here and she is on kid and doggy duty and all of a sudden this little thing, I don't know if you can see her, our little, our little pity, she wants to be. So we'll see how well this goes. We've got three boys downstairs who are trying to be good and uh, sometimes their best effort is uh, <laughs> all I can ask. They're boys. So today is day 19 of 28 Vegans, and I'm really excited to have two incredible women on today who have been a part of our journey and a part of our Gentle Barn family. So today I'm going to have Jody and Suzanne on. They are just uh, absolutely incredible people, and I'm very appreciative, and I'm so glad that we've gotten to know them and that they've been a part of our tribe, so to speak. So um, let me bring them on. I think uh, they've got a wonderful story that I can't wait to share with everybody and hopefully someone else out there hears what their stories are and relates to them and you know maybe something they say or something I share will help someone else make a connection and start their own journey so give me just a second here I gotta bring them in I hear I, I hear tears coming from downstairs, so my three-year-old is getting ready to bust up here, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how long they can hold out. How are you two? Hi, Chris. Good to see you. Hi, Chris. Likewise. So, you know, I really appreciate all that you guys do for animals, for the community. And, you know, Jody, to top it off, first off, you guys are sitting in a really cool place, which is your studio. Um, I love seeing all the animals and the pictures that you guys post and share. Um, do you want to talk about that before we get to your guys' story? Okay. Uh, well, I'm here in my studio. Behind me are the uh, some of the portraits that I've been doing for the Jenna Barn, Tennessee, California, and Missouri. And uh, I've, I'm lucky enough to uh, be able to do some portraits that they wanted, and I'm creating uh, prints of them that are going to be sold in their store, and a few of them are going to be offered very soon online as well. I'll show you what one of the prints looks like. Um, this one happens to be Lolly and um, Mickey. Uh -huh. And uh, as you can see, my portraits have inspirational quotes. I, I uh, like to think that I'm helping give a vo giving a voice to the animals. And uh, they really, when, as I paint them, I'm actually feeling so connected to them and and their stories and their stories are on the back and so uh that is incredible jody i love i love a your artistic talent and that you can share that and share their stories and uh do things that make a difference it's absolutely incredible so we'll get back to how you started doing that and how that started your story um what was it for you guys obviously you know i understand that suzanne has you know been kind and compassionate to animals for a long time, but it was kind of Dudley and the Gentle Barn coming to Knoxville that really kind of woke up and inspired you guys to come to this movement a little more. Is that a fair statement? Suzanne's got a, a great story of when she was a child and how she came to be a vegetarian early on. Chris, you were speaking about growing up in a, in a hunting culture. So did I, a small town in Oklahoma, and my granddad was a hunter. And I, at four, five, six years old, would, would go with him and would retrieve the animals that he shot. Yeah. I was six years old, and he was quail hunting. And I went up to get the quail, and it was still alive, kind of half alive. And at six years old, I, I recognized the suffering. He came up and snapped its neck, which was the, the, you know, the right thing to do, to put it out of its suffering. But at that moment, I knew I would never hunt, which I had thought I would be a hunter as well. But yeah. I didn't want to eat meat after that. And luckily, I had a mom, and this was in 1966, who was kind enough to make grilled cheese sandwiches for me while everyone else ate hamburgers and stuff. So that's so I started kind of animal advocacy at age six, mm -hmm. just recognizing suffering. That, that is so powerful at that age to recognize that, um, which kind of dovetails in the conversation we had the other day with Angie that 
she shared that her dad realized that she wouldn't talk to him after he was hunting. So he stopped hunting because of that. Yeah. My granddad actually later in life, about 10 years after that, um, started quit hunting as well. And he was in his 70s at that point. He started taking uh, food to the animals in the winter. And, like, he kind of had a shift of consciousness as well, I think. So it's incredible when you make that connection and literally you go from a life where you are taking an animal's lives to rescuing and saving lives and trying to be absolutely about conservation of all animals. Right. Um, it has really broadened my horizons on everything, not just animals, but uh, my compassion and kindness towards people as well. Uh, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. So then Jody, you kind of, you know, you were, you were there with Suzanne, obviously not back then, but, you know, your stories as your guys' journey joined each other's, you didn't really understand where she was at with the animals. Well, and, I got it philosophically, but sure. um, we, we got together 13 years ago, and uh, I wasn't eating meat, but occasional fish. Sure. I, and eggs and cheese. and cheese. Thanks. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was Don't awesome. apologize. Like if you, everyone has their journey to get where they need to go, and like you know, my journey was different than yours. Your journey is different than someone else's. And the important part isn't about oh, it took you six months, it took you six days, it took you six years. The important part is that you got there and you got it right, right? Right. And I would hear her tell her story and say she's vegan for the animals. And I would say, well, I'm vegan for my health or I'm vegan for Suzanne. And I, I started to feel like such a schmuck saying that, especially after we had this incredible opportunity to meet Dudley and get to know the animals at the gentle barn. And that was definitely the, uh, the impetus for both of us to go full on vegan. And it was a no brainer yeah. after that. Prior to, prior to going, I actually decided I was going to be 100% vegan the day I walked on the Gentle Barn property. I had been attempting that for probably five to six years mm -hmm. after being vegetarian most of my life. But um, I still, I think we were probably about 85% vegan, but we would still eat dairy when we went out or went to people's houses. We didn't want to bother anybody, you know, yeah, looking back crazy, but um, so about 85% and when she had that breast cancer, we even, you know, that made it even solidified our need to be that even more. But the day I walked on the gentle barn property and I heard Mike was the manager at the time. He said, we're vegan. And I just went, this is it. I have a support group. I met these animals. I actually know an these animals now. And I, it's personal. Yeah. Ever was. And it's been a hundred percent for me ever since that day. Yeah. You know, I, I've always told folks that, you know, Becky was following videos of Dudley online, and that's when she made her choice to stop eating meat. Um, I wasn't there, but I was supportive of her. And then the first time I booked a trip for us to go to the General Barn for our wedding anniversary, just meeting Dudley for that first time, I got it. I felt that I felt him. And I knew at that point I couldn't eat, eat meat anymore. And then it took us about a year to get to the point where we were vegan and ruled out all of the dairy from our lives because you know there are lots of things with both industries the meat and the dairy industry that people don't realize they don't know because they don't want you to know right. um, and then the old saying you know once you know better you do better and as we learned that the dairy industry really is fueling the meat industry and just as if not even more cruel right. i knew we couldn't support that anymore either so you know the more we made these connections with these incredible animals like dudley and some of the other animals at the Gentle Barn, both in uh, Knoxville and Missouri, you know, there wasn't a chance that we could do anything to harm these animals anymore. And we wanted to do all we can do to support, you know, groups and people and people in our tribe and our, you know, our Gentle Barn family to um, do all we can to help. Absolutely. And then at Leslie uh, Naylor at the Gentle Barn, she was one of the volunteers, became a good friend. And as you know, she had been talking about opening a vegan restaurant in Knoxville. Yes. That's an amazing story that I hope people will get to hear about. 
but she asked me if I would like to hang any of my art in her restaurant. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the art that I was working on were these huge abstract. And I looked around her restaurant and I'm like, I just don't think my art's quite right for this space. <laughs> uh, would you mind if I create something especially for your restaurant? And she said, sure, whatever you'd like to do. So that's when I had the idea of painting portraits of some of the animals I had met, some mm -hmm. of the animals that I'd read about, some that I just imagined in my head. I started painting portraits of farm animals. And then they, these animals were speaking to me as I was painting them. I can't really explain what happens because I kind of blank out and I don't even know where I go when I'm painting. But uh, their messages were coming through and I found inspirational quotes to add to the paintings. And I feel like it really gives a voice to those animals. And that just kind of has taken me to where I am today, where I think of myself as a compassionate artist. And i am that's my cause. And that's how I'm able to talk about and get the word out about the importance of uh, having compassion for all sentient beings and and the vegan movement and everything. Suzanne does a lot more hands-on with the animals and I spend my time in my studio connecting virtually and, and through my heart that way. And, and you know, I think that's important. There are, all, there are all kinds of different forms of, if you want to just call it activism. There's different ways to share your story, whether it be out in the cold in the mud with Suzanne and Leslie, or by painting these incredible pictures of these amazing animals and sharing those with the world by selling them online, selling them at Leslie's Cafe, selling them for the Gentle Barn. Um, you know, I don't think anyone should ever think that one is more important than the other. I think it's important to fill your being, your self-care, and whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Um, I have become a big believer in that. And, um, and I'll, you have I'll to manage to whoever I'm painting for too. So the cafe, I've been supporting the For Them Sanctuary before it opened, and I'm supporting the Jenna Barn through these animals. So yeah. just wanna make that clear that it's not just for me, I'm also helping, trying to help as many people as I can. Which, which is incredible. And I think that's um, one of the things that makes that artwork so important because it's not just, you know, beautiful quality artwork. It's actually for a purpose, you know, course for yourself spiritually it you know allows you to channel what you're feeling and what you see in these incredible animals but it also allows you to give back and help these organizations that need you know all kinds of help both financial and volunteers like Suzanne um, Leslie is definitely one of a kind I'm working on getting her scheduled hopefully we can get things worked out so uh, we can share her story because I you know I'll never forget the first trip to the gentle barn um, Leslie was there Suzanne was there um, Andrea was there, and Becky and I were two of the day, and we were all just sitting there talking. You guys were giving us tips, giving us tips where we could go to dinner that night, and we ended up at Tomato Head down in Market Square. Something, and you, you know, you hope and wish them well, but a lot of times, sometimes people don't, they're not able to make those dreams actually happen, and Leslie being one of those incredibly strong people, she not only made the Sanctuary Vegan Cafe a reality, she's made for them Sanctuary a reality as well, and, you know, as an attestment to you guys and your friendship and uh, this community, especially in the Knoxville area, there is so much love and compassion for animals in that area, and it's continually growing. It's wonderful to see, and Becky and I are so fortunate to be a part of it. Thank you. My gosh. Thank you. I mean, Chris, you, you and Becky, thanks for your inspiration and your kids. That we, you know, Captain's story, I, I like bawled through the whole thing the very first time I watched it. And then I got to meet him the next day, which is really cool. It's incredible. Yes. And this series, just that yeah. you're, this is going to be an archive of uh, stories that are so important that yeah. will be out there forever. Yeah. yeah. And I did. On the note of, of several of sanctuaries, I've been able to volunteer at several different ones, uh, the Pig Preserve, and then I go down to UT and I help with Ziggy's, have had, had, Ziggy's Refuge has had some animals here, so I get to go babysit, got to babysit Champ, 
who was a uh, hurricane survivor, a factory farm survivor. Well, it looks like I'm back. Let me see if I can get <laughs> Jody and Suzanne back. Hey, there we go. I think we lost you. I don't. I don't know. Like it said, the mind, you, I could hear still hear you guys talking, and I could see you guys, but my feed said I was paused. So who knows? Um, Technology is great when it works, and when it doesn't, it's disastrous. Um, Suzanne, you were talking about so, uh, so many different sanctuaries in the area. Different types of sanctuaries all over the world, actually. That some yeah. are for some are for networking, some are for just rescuing animals, and not so much about sharing their stories and stuff, but just about rescue. And that's it's all necessary and all wonderful and great. They're all important. All important. Absolutely. I, I think we need to do all we can do to support as many organizations as we can to be successful, to be positive, to bring you know, more light to this subject because so many people, A, don't want to know. They, you know, there's so much work against, if you look at the dairy and meat industries, the amount of marketing they put into spreading information that is actually not correct. Um, you know, we shouldn't be consuming dairy. We shouldn't be consuming meat. Um, but they're not going to tell you that. Uh, so they're not going to show you pictures and videos of what goes on in some of these places that we're not going to talk about. Um, and that's how they want it. So I think anyone that can start someplace that can spread a positive message and, and a positive story and, you know, allow people to experience these animals in their incredible nature that they really are and allow them to see that they are sentient beings, that they are loving, caring, compassionate animals, just as we are. Yeah. Um, you know, I quote Philip Wong a lot in that um, in their capacity to suffer, a dog is a bear, is a pig, is a boy. And I think that's so important that, you know, no one, no one will disagree that animals suffer. Right. But so many people still have yet to stop causing the animal suffering. They just don't, uh, it's not connecting it up. They don't see what they're doing as financing the, the torture and heinous activity of these animals. So hard to get that point across to people. Slowly but surely. Yeah, you know. It, it is slowly, but surely, and I think there are lots of important changes that have been going on. I think there are lots of positive things. If you look at, you know, just the things you can buy in the grocery store today, um, there's all kinds of options for just about anything you can think of, and companies are continually working on more stuff and more products that are cruelty-free, that are vegan, that um, I'm happy to support. And when I buy those products, I don't feel guilty for it. I don't have to worry about where it came from. Yeah, and, you know, um, I anything. It's like I really was not a foodie much. I could eat the same thing every day. It was, you know, and I'm not a cook or anything. Man, once I went vegan, now I love food. Food tastes so good. It's true. And I cook, and I it's a it's another creative outlet for me. And I I can't believe how much I love food. And how much I love eating now because I was one of those like. <laughs> eat to live not live to eat kind of person so now i love eating because it's just all of a sudden this beautiful <laughs> dish is presented to me it's amazing so that's cool i like to encourage people to try new things because we have to break that misconception that vegans only eat salads yeah. there are so many delicious dishes that are not salad that my wife can fix that have been incredible i'll take it to work and people will be like oh my god that well, I've had all kinds of technical issues today. Um, 
<laughs> my goodness. So I got paused, it got kicked off, I got ended, and uh, now I'm back to myself. Hopefully, um, maybe we can at least get Jody and Suzanne on real quick to at least say, <laughs> say goodbye because clearly this is just not working out today. Let's bring them back in here real quick. We're back. Hi. Well, um, so clearly technology is against us today, but, you know, I just wanted to say thank you guys so very much for, A, being a part of this series, for all that you do for animals and for the community and for each other. I think it's so important to spread a message of kindness and compassion and love out into the universe. And uh, I think when you send that message out, that's what you attract and that's what you build your tribe with. And Becky and I feel so fortunate to be a part of this community and be a part of, you know, this General Barn family that we feel so close to. So we really appreciate you guys and all that you guys do. Thank you, Thank Chris. you Chris. Real men <laughs> love animals, are compassionate, <laughs> and they're vegan. Thank you. Yes, they do. And I'll tell you what, I, I am trying to reach. Go ahead. That's just true strength. Today's just not been the day for this feed, but, you know, I think it's so important that I reach out to more farmers, hunters, and ranchers because, you know, more men need to wake up and come to this movement and help lead their families. Thankfully, my wife led us to this journey, and thankfully, I was smart enough to follow her. Yeah, so, thank you. Um, <laughs> so, any of this that, ha any good comes from this, I owe to my wife because she was the one that led us to this, and she laughs and says she created a monster, but it's a good kind of monster. So. Good. Thank you. Well, I've had all kinds of technical issues today. Um, <laughs> my goodness. So I got paused. It got kicked off. I got ended. And uh, now I'm back to myself. Hopefully, um, maybe we can at least get Jody and Suzanne on real quick to at least say, <laughs> say goodbye because clearly this is just not working out today. Let's bring them back in here real quick. We're back. Uh, Hi. Well, um, so clearly technology is against us today, but, you know, I just wanted to say thank you guys so very much for, A, being a part of this series, for all that you do for animals and for the community and for each other. I think it's so important to spread a message of kindness and compassion and love out into the universe. And uh, I think when you send that message out, that's what you attract and that's what you build your tribe with. And Becky and I feel so fortunate to be a part of, this community and be a part of, you know, this General Barn family that we feel so close to. So we really appreciate you guys and all that you guys do. Thank, Thank you, Chris. you, Chris. Real men love <laughs> animals, are compassionate, <laughs> and they're vegan. Thank you. Yes, they do. And I'll tell you what, I, I am trying to reach. Go ahead. That's just true strength. Today's just not been the day for this feat, but, you know, I think it's so important that I reach out to more farmers, hunters, and ranchers because, you know, more men need to wake up and come to this movement and help lead their families. Thankfully, my wife led us to this journey, and thankfully, I was smart enough to follow her. Yeah, so, thank you. Um, <laughs> so, any of this that, ha any good comes from this, I owe to my wife because she was the one that led us to this, and she laughs and says she created a monster, but it's a good kind of monster. So. Good. Thank you.